Hello everyone, welcome to this day. It is Friday and it is December 30th, New Year's Eve weekend. So hopefully you have lots of fun things planned. All right, we don't have any meetings to tell you about today, but who is on our show? We've got the Bocce Ball and Social Club today, and we have Ed Pagankop and Faye Alexiev here. Then we have, of course, Sports Corner with Cole, who's going to give us all the latest and greatest about what's coming up for the weekend and some other highlights that have happened. Then we have the Chicago Club, and we have Louis Billowitz here, who's going to tell us all about their upcoming events that are happening next year year and a little history about the club as well. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our weather. Well, we did have a little bit of rain overnight, but we aren't expecting any more rain until tomorrow evening. However, you know, things seem to change around here pretty quick. Take a look at these numbers. 59.54 tomorrow. Uh, we do have rain scheduled 59.50. Partly cloudy on New Year's Day, 60.44. PM showers starting on Monday, 57.48. Rain again on Tuesday, 58.54. 51, and it looks like we're going to see that rain in the next couple of days after that. If you are traveling this weekend, be careful. It is going to be raining uh, at the beaches and snowing in the mountains. Local beaches 6150, San Diego 6250, Santa Barbara 6145, Palm Springs 6045, Tahoe 3517, Big Bear 3820, Mammoth 3010, and Las Vegas 6248. Our sunrise this morning was at 6.55, and our sunset will be 4.52. Now, just a reminder for your Christmas tree. You can have it picked up on the following Tuesdays, January 3rd and January 10th. However, you will want to call Resident Services 48 hours prior, 949-597-4600, to make sure that they uh, have your address to pick up the tree. And the great thing is that all discarded trees will be mulched up and spread around our village in shrubs, shrub beds, and a variety of other places. All right, when we come back, we'll learn all about the bocce ball and social club, so stick around. For a change of scenery, you don't have to play golf to enjoy all that 19 Restaurant and Lounge has to offer. From a delicious breakfast menu to our delectable lunch and dinner specials, at 19 Restaurant and Lounge, there is something for everyone. Relax with your friends and family and take in the beautiful view from our spacious patio. Or enjoy a cocktail and appetizer in our lounge. 19 Restaurant and Lounge is a great place to socialize, enjoy a meal, or simply take in the view. Join us seven days a week and experience Laguna Woods' exclusive dining experience. Dr. Vias and the OCI care staff believe in one-on-one -on -one care and the patient-physician relationship. OCI care was absolutely the most wonderful place I've ever been to as far as being taken care of. The staff was very friendly and I felt very welcome and relaxed. How did I feel about Dr. Vias? The man is very gentle, he is very caring and totally involved with detail. Did you hear the big news? The FDA announced the over-the-counter hearing aid program. It's been six years in the making. And what does that mean to you if you wear hearing aids or if you're thinking about wearing hearing aids for the first time? Most people are asking themselves, what is an over-the-counter hearing aid? Would it work for me? Where do I get them to try? How much do they cost? For over 40 years, Advanced Ear Care has been helping answer questions just like this. Call us today and find out more. And remember, tell them Stuart sent you. Welcome back. Well, we have Faye and Ed here on behalf of the Bocce Ball and Social Club. Well, welcome both of you. Nice to see you. It's been a while and welcome to the show. So I just want to get a little history about both of you before we get into what Bocce Ball is. So Faye, tell me how long you've lived here and, and where you moved from. 
Uh, I've been in uh, Laguna Woods 12 years, came, back, came from San Diego. Okay. But I'm originally from Bulgaria. From Bulgaria, right. yes, we hear, we hear so the accent in there. Hear, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot make anonymous phone calls. <laughs> no, you sure, yeah. you sure can, you sure can. And Ed, uh, how about you? We've been here since uh, August of uh, 1998. Wow, you've seen a lot of changes here. Quite a few. Uh, I'm Quite sure. A few. <laughs> I'm sure. And uh, and are you primarily involved uh, with the bocce ball club, or do you belong to a lot of clubs? Uh, currently, only belong to the uh, bocce ball club, mm -hmm. and also to the American Italia Club. Oh yeah. Uh, well, that's, that's sort all. Of fits. That's all right now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know things change. How about you? Are you do you belong to a lot of clubs? Uh, well, tennis club. Okay. Uh, I play bridge. Uh, so that that is a very well. Good, all of those keep you very busy, I'm sure. So getting busier, COVID really killed it. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> for now everybody's well. coming out and having yeah, a lot of fun. Yeah, because you have to yeah. be close, right? Yeah. So bocce ball goes way back. It goes back to the BC era, and uh, yes, it it's does. been around for a really long time. So why don't we go ahead and highlight the beginning of time there? Wow. <laughs> well, they. I guess since probably these one time in some distant past. Somebody picked up a rock and threw it at another rock and says, hey, this is fun. Can you get yours that close? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the whole game. Exactly. And if you, if you look at some of the pictures there, I, I actually went back and looked at it. You know, it goes back a long way, and then it was sort of hand down. However, it seems as though that Italy is where it really got the majority of its, its rules and things that have now played today. Would that be correct? Yeah, it started with the Roman Empire right. rolling around a... Ball, uh, probably uh, carved out of uh, granite. Okay. And a, a smaller stone, and mm -hmm. then of course that was became Italy. Right. Uh, they picked up the game. They brought it to the United States when they immigrated here. And I can imagine the Italian family out playing bocce ball, and their neighbors were watching and saying, "Hey, that's fun." <laughs> it quickly spread to yeah. anyone, not necessarily Italian. Our club was formed on May first. Actually, the uh, bocce courts were dedicated on May 1st, 1970, okay. and the club was formed on May 11th, 1970. Mm -hmm. They ended that year with 220 members. Wow, and where is it today? Currently, we're about 350 members just in the process of renewing. Okay. So. Great, great. You probably have people come and go, you know, throughout the year. And I know uh, you and I had a conversation a couple years ago. You guys had won a significant tournament. Tell me about that. Oh, Christmas light contest. That's yeah. okay. It's something. They, they had a contest lighting the, the, you know, Christmas lights on the front of your manor. Oh, and, that's uh, what it we was. We won that one. Yes, we <laughs> we won two dinners at the Nineteen Club. Oh, nice. Just for great. <laughs> good, good. And say, um. How long have you been with the bocce ball club? About five years. Okay. I ended up there accidentally, and uh, the people were immediately invited me. Yeah, try it out. Mm -hmm. So. And you like it? Well, yes, uh, but basically it's because of the people. Okay. And then it's ball. We all go after the balls. Yeah. <laughs> By the yeah. way, I read yesterday that 87 percent of the worldwide games are chasing a ball, whether you're throwing it, whether you're rolling it, but it involves it's a ball. True, it's true, isn't all it? Around. That's a it, really good yep. point. It is amazing. Tennis, uh, right. uh, golf. Uh, yeah, everything, wow. yeah, right. it's 87%. Uh, 87%, boy. So the other ones, <laughs> what go? You think we'd all be blind by now trying <laughs> yeah. to find a ball. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Well, uh, different sizes, different, but, right. but it is a ball. Right. The fascination about a ball. Right, no, that's mm -hmm. great. And. Uh, yeah. And, and let's talk about the actual game itself and how it's played. I mean, there we keep talking about balls. Well, there's a lot of different balls. I mean, you mentioned one that is small, and then each team has uh, different colors. Right. It's a game that can be played by actually any number of people, usually in teams of two or more. Mm -hmm. uh, you have uh, the polino, which is a, a small white ball about the size of a cue ball. And then the, uh, the ball you throw, um, which is uh, quite a bit larger, mm -hmm. and you simply try to throw the ball as close as you can get it to the polino. Mm -hmm. And what is the surface that you play on? Uh, we pleasant, uh, presently, it's a carpet surface. Okay. Like yeah. a, 
Oh, so it's a carpet. Yeah. It's not our, uh, it's not artificial turf. No, it started out as uh, sand. Oh, okay. Very long in 1970 when the okay. courts were built, mm -hmm. and uh, that I think quickly became a nuisance for a maintenance department to keep it up. Yeah. And also, you had to rake it continually. You had to pack it down, roll mm -hmm. it, and so it's a money saving. For the community, they changed it to concrete, which isn't very good on the balls. Uh, so no. we put down a carpet okay. to save, save the balls anyway. Okay. Well, yeah, because, I mean, you, they are heavy. They're not exactly light like a wiffle ball. I mean, they're no, really no, heavy. No. So, I mean, if you don't get it just right, that thing is going to launch off the path. That's right. <laughs> and there really is not a lot of rules. Um, if your ball leaves the court, you play it over. Oh. Uh, if you accidentally knock the jack off the court, then you start the whole game over. Oh. Uh, that doesn't happen very often. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. There's white lines on the courts about three feet from each end. You stand behind the white line, mm -hmm. throw the ball, don't step over the white line. There's a white line right down the middle of the court mm -hmm. in the center. And when you initially throw the jack or the palino, you get it over that line. Okay. Any, be, anywhere between that line and the further white line. Now, did the teams start on uh, the same side, or are they on opposite sides? Uh, if you're just playing two people, uh, you both play alternately. In our club, we play it alternately. Uh, some forms of the game, one uh, player plays all four balls, then the other player plays his, his or her four balls. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then once you've, if two people, they complete it, they go to the opposite end of the court, mm -hmm. throw them back. Mm -hmm. Now, if okay. we have teams of two, uh, so now you have four people on the court. Yeah. So the, the, uh, your team member at the other end, they'll throw the uh, balls back. Okay. All right. Excellent. And then um, I wanted to also ask, now you have a membership, of course. And so when is the membership coming up? Is it calendar year? So you said people were in the process. Cal yes, calendar year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. And uh, does it cost much money to belong to your club? No. All of... Uh, Fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars for the. Year. I think this I is do. the cheapest club. Yeah, it probably now is. You know, it's thirty, forty dollars <laughs> next to free. Yeah, that's right. for sure. Yeah, <laughs> and, and you know, in somewhere around the year twenty twenty, we added social club to the name. Right. Because the club was always having a lot of socials, mm -hmm. and we currently schedule what. Yes, uh, it's not only Batch. <laughs> the, uh, there is a bingo uh, game every, every month. Okay. Uh, uh, we schedule, now it's scheduled the Valentine's dinner. Oh, okay. There are also uh, dances on and off schedule, depends on the band and uh, okay. who books it. Uh, so I'm reading here what's planned okay. in the near future, <laughs> uh -huh. um, because uh, like every second Tuesday of the month, there is a uh, 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 gathering in Clubhouse too. Anybody could go. You don't have to be a member. And that's how you attract a lot of members too. Exactly. Right. Well, they have to, you know, get, yeah. to, get to know everybody they come and, and get figure to, it out, know, right? Right. 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 Well, perfect. Well, I appreciate the information and the history of bocce ball, and uh, yeah, we'll see you again uh, next year. Thank you so much for the information. Well, thank you for letting us uh, let everyone know about it. You're welcome. Appreciate thank it. you very much. Next time, uh, bring in the the actual set, and we'll check yeah. it out. The only thing I brought in was our very first membership book. Oh, that's cute. Look at that little thing. All right. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Yeah. If you want more information about the bocce ball and social club, you can always go to the Laguna Woods Village website. That's lagunawoodsvillage.com and go to clubs and type in bocce ball and social club. We'll be right back. Happy holidays, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Sports Corner. I'm Cole Young, and I will get right into all the latest news. The NFL season is quickly coming to an end, but the playoffs still hang in the balance for several teams. Take a look at the teams that have already clinched either their playoff spot, their division title, or both. For these teams that have clinched, it isn't time to rest just yet. 
teams still need to compete to earn seeding, and teams like the Eagles, Chiefs, and Bills need to clinch that number one seed, which comes with a first round bye and a home field advantage. Then there are teams that are just one win out from a playoff berth and can secure their postseason spot this week. A lot still needs to happen for these teams, including victories and other bubble teams to lose, but hope still remains. If the season ended today, this is how the playoff bracket would look. But with two weeks in the regular season remaining, anything can happen. Personally, I hope teams like the Lions and Jaguars that have been historically bad teams can sneak into the playoffs this year. Who doesn't love an underdog story? Speaking of underdogs, the Denver Broncos entered this year as a Super Bowl favorite, but have now been mathematically eliminated from playoff contention for weeks. Not only that, Russell Wilson has been benched and head coach Nathaniel Hackett has been fired before even completing his first season as the Broncos head coach. This team was the biggest surprise this season, but for all the wrong reasons. Denver now joins the ranks of teams like the Bears, Texans, Colts, and Cardinals, all of which are teams whose seasons will be over by the end of next week. With that said, time to make my picks. It's been a few weeks since the last episode of Sports Corner, but in the last episode, I did again go 4-0 with my picks. Let's continue this streak and end these next two weeks on a high note. My four winners are the Cowboys over the Titans, the Chiefs to yet again take down the Broncos, the 49ers to handedly win against the Raiders, and the Chargers to continue their hot streak against the Rams. Outside of professional football, the college football playoffs kick off this weekend. Tomorrow night, we get the Fiesta Bowl, which will feature number two Michigan and number three TCU squaring off for their spot in the national championship, and the Peach Bowl, which is the matchup between the reigning champs, the number one Georgia Bulldogs, against the underdog number four ranked Ohio State. Both of these games should be incredible matchups with a lot of scoring and big plays, but my prediction is that Georgia will be facing off against Michigan in the national championship game on January 9th. Both of these teams are favorites to win this weekend, but anything can happen in college football, as we've seen all year long. With all the happenings in the football world, it's been a while since we've talked about baseball. The MLB free agency period is underway, and some big names will be wearing new uniforms next season. Possibly the biggest story so far this offseason has been Carlos Correa. The former Houston Astros shortstop signed a historic 13-year, $350 million contract, tying Bryce Harper for the longest free agent deal in baseball history with the San Francisco Giants. Then, in an incredibly shocking turn of events, the deal fell apart over what's been described as a difference of opinion concerning Correa's physical evaluation. After the quote-unquote failed physical, Correa and the New York Mets agreed on a 12-year, $315 million contract. The Mets have been absolutely loading up their lineup for the future, spending over $800 million on free agents this offseason. Baseball season will begin in just a few short months, so it'll be interesting to see how the rest of the free agency period plays out. I want to thank you all for joining me again on this week's edition of Sports Corner. Be sure to tune in for some very meaningful football this weekend, and come right back here next Friday to catch all the updates. I'm Cole Young, Happy New Year, and I'll see you next time. Welcome back. Well, we have Louie Billowitz here on behalf of the Chicago Club. Well, welcome. Very nice to have you here. Nice to meet you. It's an honor to be here. Well, thank you so much for showing up. We appreciate it. And, you know, the Chicago Club has their TV show and lots of travel and lots of things going on. But you're here to tell us all about the entertainment that you guys have for next year, which is awesome. But before we get to that, tell me about the club. And now you have so many members. Um... About three years ago, we came to the conclusion that if you stay the same, you'll eventually fail. <laughs> so we put a five-year plan together based on um, John Wooden's Pyramid of Success. Wow. The first year was all about the um, bylaws, getting them strong, giving us directions, um, job description, They're really terrific bylaws that answered all of our problems, hmm. and that was the strength. The second year, we had a... Uh, 33 people on our board, many of them didn't have jobs. So we sort of uh, massaged that, and now we have 17 incredible people led by our president, Sharon, who's been there, Sharon Beck, who's been there um, eight years. And we have a board that just uh, 17 people that are self-starters and also that get along very well. We have mm -hmm. no arguments, not even one. Wow. No debates. It's just nice. it's fun to be together. Mm -hmm. That was the second year. The third year was 
was to explode in numbers. That was our goal. Right. So what we've done is we put a lot of money into our acts and started, we started initially and because of that people are joining because mm. they see the entertainment we have. Right. We have quite a few monthly shows that have people that normally play in the Performing Arts Center, mm -hmm. where, but now they, they can come in for a lot less money and, and see that. So we now have 1,100, 1,200 uh, members. For this coming year, we've already got 600. We haven't even started the year. Wow. And the difference between the normal 300 and 1,200 is 900 times $40 membership is $36,000, which means... Mm. Besides our budget, we spend another $3,000 every month for our monthly shows. Right. And then we double it for the pack shows, Right. which is what we're basically wanting to talk about is the new, yeah. um, the new series that we have coming in. Yeah. Where it's the initial time for the Magical Moments series. Right. Um, very similar to the Champagne Pops. Okay. And um, you can buy four tickets at one time. Mm -hmm. um, you get the same seat for all shows. Okay. And then the following year, you can renew your seats. So you're getting in a ground floor with very high-level acts. Right. Almost all of our acts we're getting from Las Vegas. Wow, that's great. Now, how are they Are they circulating here in California, and then they sort of make you guys a stop? Is that no, how that works? No, I call them. I find them, and oh. I call them. Um, if I see that they're playing in the Sacred Strims, or if they're, ah. I, I go to, I look at the Vegas acts a lot. When I see one that I think would fit what our members want, because, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, and we're trying to bridge the gap between young and old. Good. Then, uh, um, but our budget has absolutely doubled there, so we're spending yeah. a lot more mm -hmm. to bring in a higher level. Mm -hmm. We may make less money, but we're giving our members better shows, and that's what we, our goal yeah. is. Well, I mean, that's, that's really the key, right, is right. the members, and you want to have a lot of fun, and you want to have a lot of sociability, because that's what the village is really all about, is everybody getting together. We're actually showing Tom Jones impersonator right now. He looks pretty good. He looks just like he him, He looks just he? like him. He sounds just like him. He, he sells out in Las Vegas, and we're very fortunate to get him. That is awesome. All right, well, let's quickly take a look at what you have coming up for the year. You've got a variety of different things that are happening um, over the months. So let's go ahead and talk about the first one, which is going to be, uh, wow, it looks like you've got a great show, a great lineup here, Walk Like a Man. Okay, That's these are not our monthly shows. These are our performing act shows. Right, so these are the performing shows, that right. uh, the ones that you just mentioned. You can buy the four tickets right. for all these. So we've got that one. The first one. The first one is um, Walk Like a Man. Mm -hmm. They are the number one um, tribute group to um, Frankie Valli and the Four Seasons. Nice. And everybody loves that kind of music. Fun. The, second, the next one, go ahead. Is, the second one is, his name is Harmick, and um, he's such a clone of Tom Jones that they did a film of Tom Jones, and he was playing Tom Jones in it. Oh, okay. Okay, and he is a... He's appeared with Tom Jones multiple times. Okay. It's a tremendous show. The third one, we have a club that has its own niche, and we're trying to make the older and the youngers happy. Yeah. You know, we don't want to be just one or the other. There are some clubs that are, like the boomers, that are fabulous for youngers. There are some that are good for olders. We want th that niche. Mm -hmm. So you've heard us talk about some of the older groups. Well, our next one is a little... A little bit younger, because the Temptations and the Four Tops, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that's going to be sensational because they're, um, it's just a great show. And following that, we have um, a tribute to uh, the Rolling Stones. Oh, nice. And uh, they look like them. They sound like them. How can anyone? You know? Oh, yeah, look at the right there. I was going to say, how can anyone look like the main one, right? <laughs> uh, Mick Jagger. That's Mick Jagger, <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Oh, that looks like a we lot of fun. We actually cloned him. He's a robot. So, you know. <laughs> and, you know, of course, the most important thing, of course, is people can get those tickets right now. Right now. They're already on sale. All right. They went on sale Wednesday. The box office is open Wednesday and Friday. Good. I, I was there just Wednesday morning, and during that time, we sold 150 tickets. Wow, that's awesome. So it's a Good. big demand. People, This is the time to get in on the ground floor. Yeah. Because... Um, Ten years from now, when we're still going, um, you'll have the greatest seats. Yeah, well, and right. even next year, the shows that we have for coming on for next year mm -hmm, mm -hmm. are just phenomenal. So Good. we're like a year ahead. That's great. Now, when do you guys meet? Um, we have monthly meetings the second Thursday. Okay. And we bring in such high-level acts for the monthly meetings, it's hard to miss. And that's why we, pa we pack them in. 
Man, that's and great. they're like, we have a tribute to, for example, in February to um, the Everly Brothers. Oh, good. Okay. Well, the Everly Brothers played at the pack, and people spent thirty-five or forty dollars uh -huh. a seat to see them. Right. And now, if you're a member, you get them for free. Wow, so that is awesome. It's a great deal. And the last show in our series is the Jersey Boys. Okay. I'm sorry, not the Jersey Boys. The, the Jersey Tenors. That are going to be like the Jersey Boys. They're not like them at all. They, oh. <laughs> they they sing popular songs. They 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 do opera. Oh. They do. Um, they're like the tenors, the three tenors used to be. Okay, yeah. And they cover a whole myriad of music. I love and, it. And, um, you know, it's wonderful. And the best thing is the people that walk away from our monthly and our, these meetings, these shows with big smiles on their faces. Well, that's um, the key. Then we know we've done our job. We exactly. are not out here to compete with any clubs. Right. We're just here to do the best for us. Yeah, yeah. And some clubs I have to very quickly tip my hat to, like John Pearlstone with his VNC and, and, and Millie Brown um, with her um, Champagne Pops. Mm -hmm. We contact each other, these yeah. clubs, and call each other to work together so that we don't duplicate not only the act, Good. but we don't duplicate the genre. And the working together with other clubs is really, really special because yeah. we these are three clubs with one goal in mind, yeah. make the membership happy. There is always yeah. something to do here, and music is one of It's them. an adult camp. <laughs> it is an adult camp. That is true. Thank you so much. I appreciate That's the information. Of course, you can always get in, in touch with the Chicago Club at the Chicago Club LWV.com for more information about all these fantastic shows and your monthly meetings. Thank you. I appreciate honor. it. All okay. right. Stay right there. I'm going to close the show with will, you sitting right will there. Will do. All right. Okay, so just a couple of things before we head out. Of course, it is New Year's Eve weekend, and we wanted to make sure that you guys have lots of movies. So today's movie, just so you know, is called The Best in Show, and that you can see at 2 p.m. with subtitles, 6 p.m. without subtitles, brought to you by Memorial Care. And then Saturday's show is The Upside with Kevin Hart. You can see that also at 2 p.m. with subtitles, 6 p.m. without subtitles, and that's brought to you by City of Hope. Now, we will not have a This Day Tomorrow or Monday, but we have a load of movies for you, so check out this lineup. On Sunday, which would be New Year's Day, we have all of those fantastic ones that you can see there. And then on January 2nd, Monday, we will not be having it this day, but we have tons of movies for you. So enjoy all of that. Have a great new year. And uh, before we head out, let me just show you the weather one more time. We are expecting rain and clouds. So unfortunately, uh, our New Year's Eve is looking a little soggy, but New Year's Day, we are gonna have partly cloudy skies and then the showers begin on Monday. If you're traveling, take a look at these numbers. The rain, of course, will be at the beaches and snow is in the mountains. So make sure you check Caltrans for any travel arrangements. All right, have a great happy new year and we'll see you again next year right here on Village Television on Tuesday. Bye-bye. Hi there, I'm Bob Eubanks. Remember me, I'm the king of whoopee. <laughs> and you're watching Village Television, but everybody does.